It's great to be with you today and it's an absolute privilege to be able to share from the Word of God uh, with you. But before I do that, I just want to recap some of the events that we've seen. It, it's so good to have so many things coming up. I'm really looking forward to, to Easter and beyond that to some of the courses starting. But before that, I want to talk about next weekend. So next Saturday from 9am till about 1pm, we have Step to God and Step to Church. Now, if you haven't heard anything about these, these are the first two steps of our discipleship pathway. The ministry team here at Bayside, we, we were like, how can we engage more of our church community, help them to understand our values, our vision, our mission, why we do what we do, but also deepen their own relationship with God. And in the process, we've come up with the steps pathway. And so Step to God is, is all about kind of knowing God more and understanding more about who He is and how we relate with Him. And Step to Church, the second step, is all about the operational side of church, how church works, why we do church, and how as individuals we can all get involved in the life and the community aspect of church. So if you're interested in these, I encourage you to head to the, the church website, BaysideChurch.com. .au and register for them. Now, in order to do Step to Church, you do need to do Step to God first. And so if you have done Step to God, feel free to, to sign up for Step to Church. Both are incredibly uh, insightful courses. I am a little bit biased in that I've written content for both and I love presenting in them. But in hearing from many of the congregation and even staff who have done them, I want to really encourage you to put aside some time to come to the church building on Saturday to do these. So please register as soon as you can and uh, you'll see some links in the description about these as well. And so the value of these first two steps of the discipleship pathway equip us with the knowledge of God and our relationship with Him and then how we can outwork that in our individual lives but also within the life of our church community. And so today, I want to kind of build on that a little bit with my message, which is called The Power of the Process. And so throughout life, to achieve anything, to learn, to grow, to take positive steps in any area, there is a process. I'm sure we're all familiar with the different processes that we have, whether they're in our workplaces, when it comes to, to study or, and places we go to study, um, and even just self-development and self-growth. There are processes to helping us grow and better ourselves. And this is especially so when it comes to our spiritual life. In presenting ourselves to God and renewing our mind to focus on Him, rather than the world around us. And this is what I want to unpack in our time together today. As we start, let's pray. Father God, I thank you for who you are. I thank you for your goodness, for your faithfulness, for your love, for your mercy. And I thank you that you are willing to go on a journey with us and to help us on this process of transformation and of our minds being renewed and being able to live our best lives for you because of what you have done for us. So I pray that you would speak through me today, that we would all be encouraged by, the, by your word and by your revelation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I wonder if you tuned in last week or, or maybe throughout this previous week and have uh, had a look at Pastor Rob's message from last weekend. I'm loving this series on reimagining church and I think it's a, a really important thing. And this is a process that we go on. And so process is the key word today. You're gonna to hear it a lot and I'm saying it because I think that sometimes when we hear the word process, we, we kind of have a bit of a resistance. You know, we put our arms up, we step back, but process isn't bad. Process is a good thing because it enables us 
to get a greater understanding and revelation of God, of, of who he is, but also the situations and the circumstances that we're in. If we don't go through a process, then I, I don't see how we, we fully grow without going through that process. And this whole thing of reimagining church is a process that together we are going on to see how church has changed in a post-COVID world and how it will continue to change and adapt. And that adaption is, is really important. And Pastor Rob talked about that in his message last week, that as technology has changed throughout the centuries, the church has had to adapt in how it uses that technology. So the church has adapted from an organizational sense, from a structural sense, through programs, and then how we use technology. Like I love the fact that I can come here and stand in a room, look at a camera, share the word of God, and it is broadcast around the country and around the world. You know, 50 years ago, 100 years ago, that couldn't happen. You know, in a pandemic back then, a pastor would have to write out their message 50, 100, 150, 200 times and then walk around and deliver that sermon in a written form to their congregation. So adapting is really important. But the same can be said for us individually. Our lives change and adapt and we need to be transformed as the world and as our lives change. And so today, it's important for us to be active in engaging with the process so that we can develop our relationship with God and know his plan for us. It is so important for us to engage with that process, to be willing to adapt, to be a willing to, to, to be willing to change to, or to see change happen in our world and in our lives. And as we do that, we are transformed in likeness to God. And so today's text is Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I want to read two different translations of this because throughout my message, I'm going to be using some of the wording from both. So first from the Holman translation. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true worship. Do not be conformed to this age but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the good, pleasing and perfect will of God. And then we have the NIV. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Other translations say your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. This is one of my favorite scriptures. And I want to unpack a few elements of these two verses. However, I will have a focus on the mind and on our thinking throughout today. Why the mind? Well, one because Paul mentions it in these couple of verses. He actually talks about the mind quite a lot in his letters. And I think he realizes the importance that our mind plays in seeing the world and how we experience life and experience the world around us. When our mind is struggling, our view of ourselves, of God, of life, of everything is affected. And so for us, particularly as Christians, as we seek to distance ourselves from the world and embrace God and the things that he has for us, we need to do a health check on our mind to ensure that it is strong and that it is standing upon and full of the promises and the word of God. And so I have three focus points today. Number one, the process of presentation. Number two, the process of transformation, and number three, the process of renewal. And these are all things that require us to be active in some way. 
whether it be submitting ourselves to God or choosing to make choices that reflect who He is and who we are in Him, there is a part we play in how our spiritual life plays out. Yes, the Holy Spirit works within us, helps to convict us of sin, helps to to wash us white as snow. You know, the blood of Christ does that and, and we are transformed on the inside. But the way that our lives play out, the fruit of our lives, in part is up to us. We have to choose to distance ourselves from the world and to live for Christ. And so point one, the process of presentation. I wonder, have you ever done a presentation for work or for school? How did it go? Was it good? Bad? Maybe somewhere in between? I've had my share of these. I mean, it comes to being in front of a camera, whether it's to, to preach a message, to, to host church online, to film news ads or other things. Sometimes it goes well, sometimes not so well. I think back to grade six and I, I laugh at this because if anyone knows me, I can't really sing all that well. I'm not really in tune. I'm a little bit tone deaf. Uh, but in grade six, before my voice broke, uh, I actually sang at a couple of assemblies. There were some interesting song choices, and I don't know whether you would call it singing, but more kind of yelling, kind of in that Jimmy Barnes fashion as my favourite singer. Uh, and one of them went really well. People loved it. Uh, I'm fairly certain I sang the song Land Down Under by Men at Work, uh, and, and I loved it. And the response afterwards was was. People thought I was awesome, asking for autographs. So for a grade six kid, it was pretty good. Not long after that, I sang another one. And uh, I think my music teacher knew that I wasn't great at that song. So he sang along as well. And what I found out afterwards was you couldn't really hear me singing. You could only hear him singing. And so uh, I copped it a little bit for, for lip syncing. So I guess I was doing that before it became in vogue and more people were doing it. Uh, but there's a, an example of a good presentation and a bad presentation. And we, we see that throughout life. Sometimes our presentation on what we do is good. At other times, it's not so good. And in our scripture, we read Paul saying to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. And so our presentation to God is who we are. It is our physical selves and how we live our lives. He then goes on to say, this is your true worship or your true and proper worship or your spiritual act of worship. So presenting ourselves to God Sacrificing our lives to Him in obedience is our act of worship. And I know that that sounds like a lot. However, I believe that what Paul is doing is offering an exhortation or encouragement to all of us. He starts off by saying, In view of the mercies of God, present yourselves. So, what are these mercies? We read earlier in the letter of Romans, the power of God's grace and that God's mercy is evident in his plan to save humanity from their sins and to declare them, us, each and every one of us, as righteous and to assure us of the hope of glory. Hallelujah. And so from this, we find encouragement that Paul is exhorting us to present ourselves to God willing to submit to his plans and his purposes in response to his grace and his mercy to us. And now I'm not saying that we should do it out of compulsion and obligation going, oh, well, I guess God's done this for us, so we kind of probably maybe should do this for him. I'm saying that as we allow that revelation and that truth of his grace and his mercy and his love for us, as we let that take hold of our mind and flow through our bodies, we can't help 
but go, okay, God, you have given me everything. Here, have all of me. It needs to be an active and willing choice that we make, not something that we do out of obligation. And I know it sounds easy when we say it like that, that you know God has done X, so we must do Y. But I know just as much as you that this is easy to say and often hard to act out. I think our mind, and I think Paul specifically references the mind in verse 2, and I'll unpack that a little bit more in a little bit. I think our mind is often a battlefield. We question our abilities. We question who we are. We question what we are doing with our lives, whether God really loves us, if we are failures, and the list goes on. These questions rage within us and affect the way in which we present ourselves to and before God. You see, church, the enemy creates strongholds in our mind that drive a wedge between us and God that are designed to make us forget about his mercies and his grace and his love for us, to forget who we are as sons and daughters of the living God. So how do we combat this and succeed in the process of presentation? Well, in Ephesians 6, it speaks about the armor of God. And when it comes to the mind, we have the helmet of salvation. And I think that this is incredibly significant because we know that through salvation, through having that faith and accepting that gift of God, of His grace, that we are no longer separated from God, but we are one with Him. When we accept that, when we accept that salvation gift, we have victory over sin. We have victory over death. And we are set free from being stuck in the world. Does that mean that hardships and things like that are going to cease? No. We're still going to be confronted with, with challenges, with, with temptation. But when we wear the helmet of salvation, we can stand on the fact that we are victorious and that we are free in Christ. And so that is really important for us. And I think that in every situation in life, we should have every part of the armor of God on. But more than anything, I think this helmet of salvation, because if, like I said earlier, if our mind is, is, is affected, then how we view the world is, goes through whatever is going on in our mind. Whatever we perceive as true is how we see the world. And so if we have the helmet of salvation on, we see the world through victory, through freedom, through the blood of Christ. We see the world in a way that means that, yes, temptation may come, hardship may come, but we can overcome. We can persevere, we can endure, and we will get through this because of Christ in us and what he has done for us. So when we stand upon his love, and walk with the revelation that we are saved by grace through faith, we can stand firm against any scheme of the enemy and present ourselves to God. And this is a process. This is a process. And you know, we have moments where our mind will, will try to fail us. You know, one more drink won't hurt. You know, nothing bad's going to happen. Visiting that website that's not really a bad thing. You'll be fine. Doesn't matter what anybody else says, you know, it's not bad. Maybe it's that person doesn't deserve forgiveness or another chance. Just forget about them. Maybe it's don't bother trying. You aren't good enough. Are you serious? You really think you can do that? We've all heard or thought these or similar things. And so we actively, we have to actively choose to put on that helmet of salvation and choose to present ourselves to God. We present ourselves to God knowing 
that we are victorious and we are free and that with him, we can overcome. We can get through anything. The process is in that presenting ourselves to God. And I want you to remember this. He has brought pleasure by us doing that. It says that as we present ourselves to God, it is pleasing to him. And so as we present ourselves to him, we discover number two, the process of transformation. I don't know if you've ever seen the TV show or the movie Transformers. Uh, as a kid in particular, I loved it. You know, Having a car and you start pushing it along and then all of a sudden it just changes and it's into this huge robotic kind of superhero or supervillain and it's really cool, especially Bumblebee. If you're a Transformers fan, you'll know who I'm talking about. But you see, when we accept the love of God and the gift of salvation, we are washed clean spiritually. We may be the same on the outside, but we change on the inside. And while we do have some initial transformation when we accept God and accept that gift of salvation, this must also be a continued process. We need to and we must continue to present ourselves to God, actively engaging with Him and developing our level of intimacy and relationship with Him. And as we do so, we find that we are continually transformed. Much like a car needs fuel or a mobile phone needs to be charged, so do we need to be filled and refilled to see further growth and development and transformation in our lives. By choosing to present ourselves to God, we decide to live for Him rather than following the patterns of this world. This is essential in the process of transformation. We all have our vices and the things of the world that distract us from our hurt, from our shame, from our guilt, that quench our anger or desire for attention. So we need to set our eyes on things above to take up our cross daily. You know, by nailing these vices to the cross and dying to our worldly selves each and every day and then declaring the freedom and victory and life that we have in Christ. Amen. And this is only part of it because more than that, by reading and meditating on scripture, by spending time in prayer, by joining a church community and getting involved, I think back to last week being Contribute Weekend and our way that we can join a team. And I encourage you to con continue praying about that. But by joining a church and, and getting involved in church life, we are surrounded by people made in the image of God. I mean, everyone within and outside of the church is made in the image of God. But when we are around fellow brothers and sisters, Iron sharpens iron. We are transformed more to be like Christ by being around those that are filled with the Holy Spirit and live for Him. We need to position ourselves to receive from God and allow for the process of transformation to continue in our lives. And so, as we are transformed, we are renewed. And that brings to my final point, number three, the process of renewal. And so looking up the definition of the word renew or renewal, there are some profound representations and realities of this word. One example, we've got make new. So it could be make new in the form of existence or to restore to freshness. Another definition is to replenish. So the act or process of renewing. And often with that, it's an act of repetition. And so when I consider the journey we go on in life, and especially through our faith development, I see how we are made new. It starts with salvation. That initial acceptance of the gift of grace and of God's love to us. You know that Jesus came and died on the cross for us. As we accept that, there is some form of initial transformation. When we go through the waters of baptism, that is transformation. 
and that is renewal. It is restored to freshness. That positioning ourselves to receive the new thing that God is pouring out is part of renewal. I preached a message a few weeks ago called Get Rid of the Lid and I unpack that particular thing of positioning ourselves to receive what God is pouring and being renewed through that. So feel free to go and check that out at a later date as well. But when we position ourselves to receive, it sees us be restored to freshness and replenished. And by by repeatedly choosing God, by repeatedly presenting ourselves to Him, by repeatedly positioning ourselves to be transformed, we become renewed. These are all parts of the process of renewal. And relationship with God is not pointless. In fact, it's far from it. As we seek God and lay down our own desires and plans, which we need to do consistently and continually, we become more and more like Christ. And at the end of verse 2 of Romans 12, it says, so that, and these are two great words and often speak to what comes of obedience to God. So that. I love those two words. And so it says, so that you or we may discern what is the good, pleasing and perfect will of God. There is power in the process, church. When we actively choose and live out the process of discipleship and living for God, we discover more and more about Him, who we are in Him, and what His good, pleasing, and perfect will is. So we see our identity and our purpose clearer and clearer as we go on this process of development. So today I encourage you to take captive every thought, to silence the inner critic, the inner doubter, the inner voice lying about who you are and embark on the process of presentation to God, the process of transformation that follows and to repeat this so that the process of renewal can take place in each and every one of us. There is power in the process, church. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you are willing to go on this journey with us and that we have the opportunity to get to know you more and more. And so today, those watching at home who may not have taken that step of accepting your gift of grace, I just want to provide opportunity right now. And if that's you, feel free to let us know in the chat or email connect at baysidechurch.com.au and we'll reach out and we'll, we'll help you go on this journey and experience this process of transformation and renewal. But if this is the first time you've heard about the love of God or maybe you've heard about it before and you wanna go, you know what, today I'm choosing to live for Jesus. I'm not gonna to conform to the patterns of this world but I'm going to live for Christ. If you want to make that step today, then I encourage you to do so. And I hope that you do so. So let us know in the chat or send an email after the service. And I just want to pray for those taking this step today or recommitting this today. Father, I just pray that you would pour out your love on each and every one of us. And for those that are choosing to follow you today or recommitting to you today, I pray that you would renew them, you would refresh them and equip them for the process of spiritual growth. And for all of us, I pray for the strength to endure on this process, the strength to walk in your goodness, to walk in your grace, to walk in your mercies each and every day, to take up our cross daily, to set our eyes on things above, to commit to the process of having our minds renewed, of being transformed and of presenting ourselves to you as a living sacrifice. Father, I just pray for your revelation for each and every one of us today about which part of the process we may need to start to focus on more or to engage with more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.